In the first four videos in our Kipware M conversational series, we've been dealing with standard types of machining using the conversational screens which are great for standard types of shapes. But what about shapes that are not standard such as the part we have on the, on the screen here? Well, Kipware comes with our Kipware sketchpad which allows you to either draw the shape directly uh, in the sketchpad or import a DXF file and create a toolpath uh, through the sketchpad. So the sketchpad is for non-standard shapes such as the one we see on the screen. And what we want to do is we want to be able to uh, go into the sketchpad, draw uh, this contour that we want to machine, and then we want to machine it with a rough uh, toolpath and then a finished toolpath. So let's say we have it in a fixture, something like this, uh, maybe clamp down and then have the whole fixture held into the vise. And what we want to do is we want to come in over here, I'll go around the part, uh, all working uh, the depth of the part, and then come back with a finish cut and finish uh, the shape. So let's dive right in. I've got Kipware M running. And the sketchpad has uh, two ways you can use it. You can use it integrated in Kipware M. So you can use the sketchpad to create cycles or you can use the sketchpad as a standalone application to create complete machining programs. So if the only thing you wanted to do was uh, some kind of contouring uh, through the sketchpad, you can use it as a standalone application, create your complete G-code program from within the sketchpad. In my case here, I'm going to create a rough toolpath, a finished toolpath, uh, which are both going to be in cycle format. I'm going to load those cycles into the tree and then I'm going to create a main program uh, using those two cycles. So I'm going to access the sketchpad from uh, within Kipware M. And we start it up and we have a blank screen. I'm just going to bring my part back up so that we can see what we're going to machine. So the only thing I need to draw in the sketchpad really is the contour or the elements that I want to machine. So I'm going to start in this corner and I'm going to come up and go around and end up in this corner. And you can see there's a lot of information I don't know. I don't know any of these tangency points. We're going to use a feature in the sketchpad called AutoPath, which will automatically calculate the tangency points and create the contour from only the information that I know on the screen, which is the start point, the end point, the angle of the lines, and the radius. So AutoPath will automatically calculate the tangency points for us. And the way the sketchpad works is we just want to uh, use the line menu or arc menu. So a first element is going to be going this way. Then we're going to tell it we want to fill it. Then we're going to put another element going this way. And again, all I need to draw in the sketchpad, just to simplify things for myself, is the elements uh, that I actually want to machine. So first thing I'm going to do is a select from my line menu, and I'm going to select a line going in this direction. Uh, it's going to be a polar line. It's going to be starting at 2.750 in X and 0 in Y. And the angle of the line is 50 degrees. Well, the angle on the print is 130, but you can see we're starting from here, uh, so that would be 50 degrees. I don't know anything else, so I'm going to tell it I want to use AutoPath. Then I'm going to give it a fillet of 1 inch. And then I'm going to select the line going in this direction and give it my endpoint. My endpoint in X is 3 inches, my endpoint in Y is 4 inches, and the angle of the line from the print is 112 degrees. So now you can see that the sketchpad automatically calculated my tangency points and gave me the contour that I want to machine. And now that I have my elements available to me, uh, I can go ahead and I can create a toolpath. Creating a contour toolpath in the sketchpad is a matter of telling the software the start point, the direction I want the cutter to go, and then the end point. So these are the elements that comprise my sketch and they're also in the element list. When I click on them, you'll see that they get highlighted and that there's a circle at the start point. So this defines the start point, the direction the cutter will go. And if I define this point as my start point and find the element which is the end point, which is this one, and define this as my end point. Now I can have multiple lines, multiple contours. If I have uh, many lines that comprise the contour, it's still a matter of starting at the start point in finding the last contour that I want to machine and then the software will automatically combine them all together, link them all together to create a toolpath. So here I've got my start point and my starting element and then my ending element. I can now select my machining mode 
and I can fill in the parameters. So let's give it a clearance plane of an inch. A zero would be the top surface. The part is three quarters of an inch thick, and a hundred thousandths would be my clearance plane above the part. Height offsets and tool numbers are going to be done inside Kipware M. All we're interested in doing is creating a cycle in this particular case. But here's where you could create a complete program. But in our case, we're just going to create a cycle, and then we're going to use Kipware M uh, to be able to take the cycle that we've created in the sketchpad and make a program. So I'm going to put a couple parameters in here, and I want to go 100,000 step the cut. Uh, I have a cutter diameter of 3 quarters. So now I can use Kipware CSF to get my speeds and feeds because I have my diameter of my cutter. So I'm going to hit roughing, pull down aluminum, pull down the one of my 10 subcategories, hit the calculate button, and then hit record. So my RPM and my feed rate come from my database. I'm going to give it a program number. I'm going to tell it that I want to use cutter compensation to offset number one. I'm going to select a approach direction. Now this will get my cutter compensation going and then create program. And here's my G-code program created to rough that contour in depths of cut of 100 thousandths. I'm going to save it as a Kipware M cycle and I'm going to put rough contour And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to finish the toolpath, but I'm going to go the other way. So I'm going to clear out my start and end points. I'm going to select this element, which is I want to be my start point, but the cutter is going the wrong direction. So I can select the reverse line direction, and now I can select it as my starting element. My ending element, the direction doesn't matter here because we've told the software that we want to start here and go in this direction. So it'll find this as my ending element and it will automatically reverse the coordinates to be able to make a connecting contour. So if I select it and select my stop point, open up my machining mode again. Now everything that I had before is, is correct, but I want to do this three quarters of an inch deep. My depth of cut this time I want to be three quarters of an inch so that it will only take it in one cut. I'm going to go back and get some finishing RPMs and feed rates from my database. Put those into my form. And then I'm going to switch my cutter compensation from this direction to this direction. And I'm going to select offset number two and change my approach to this type of an approach because now I'm coming in from the top of the part. Hit create program and now I have my toolpath to be able to do that finishing cut. We're going to save this as Finish Contour. And now we have the two toolpaths that we would want, our roughing toolpath and our finishing toolpath. And now we can go back to Kipware M and start the process of loading those cycles and creating the main program. So now back in Kipware M, I'm going to load those two cycles that I created. I'm going to find the rough contour and the finished contour. So I have my two cycles. If I take a look at the G code, you can see that this is my finishing cycle and that this one is my roughing cycle. So now I can come back into main program and I can start putting some tool numbers and linking these cycles to my tools. So operation number one is going to be tool number one. RPMs are inside the cycle so I don't need to worry about that. Height offset number one, clearance plane of 100 and I'm going to select rough contour to associate that toolpath with this tool. Tool number two going to be the finish contour. So we have our two cycles, our tools, give it a program number, and create G-code. So here's our one big main program that we can send to the machine with tool one doing our roughing, 
using G42 in height offset number one and then our finishing contour using tool number two and G41 offset number two. So for shapes that fall outside the standard category we have the Kipware Sketchpad where we can create toolpaths for contouring or pocketing uh, using the machinist mode which we've covered in other videos for the Sketchpad or we can just simply draw the contour like we did and then create the toolpath through the Sketchpad.